What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Mr. Detective Walton. And how are you? I'm good. You're waving around your hair. You have a lot of hair right now. I'm a hippie. It's it's just flowing in the wind and gets in my eyes. It's a mess. My dad said he likes you better with hair, so I think you're going to keep it now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> in today's episode, we're going to talk about ask and you shall receive versus your energy. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, on Wednesday's episode, I talked to you about my dad taking me to his next-door neighbor's house, which is also the tenants who live in the house that Clint and I own. And one thing that I didn't make mention of, I know we talked a lot about the easiest way to give back in community service and just finding ways to help. It's not my responsibility as the, the landowner to maintain their their land in terms of the weeds and things like that that grow. And there are a lot of things that you can do if you choose to do it for your tenants. And when my dad and I were leaving, I had his arm and we were walking very slow on purpose. And I just so happened to look up at the palm trees in that that property. That property has one, two, two or three, three. technically three palm trees. And there's one of them. It's probably a good 20 feet. 25 Mm -hmm. feet up in the air and it's humongous and as I'm staring at it I'm like man this really looks like shit and it needed to be trimmed and when I say needed to be trimmed I'm talking in my regards did we have to get it trimmed no we didn't have to get it trimmed but just by looking at it I wanted it to not look like that and so I I just lightly mentioned to my dad and he's looking up at it with me and I tell him you know we we should get that trimmed like just in passing I shit you not. I go home and it was probably four hours later and my dad calls me and he says, princess, I'm standing in my front yard and right across the street from me, there's a man and I've talked to him and he's getting ready to trim down this tree across the street. And I asked him if he could trim yours and he said that he would for $200. There was that palm tree and then the other two, he was going to trim them up for us. And I, I just paused and I'm like, of course my dad would have some guy who trims trees right across the street after I just made mention to him that we should get that tree trimmed. And I started thinking about how it's always been that way with my dad. The concept of ask and you shall receive. We've talked about the the reticular activating system on this show before where If you buy a new red car, you're always going to see that same new red car all over the place. And the same is to be said with the way that my dad's mind and his his essence is. If ever there has been something in terms of a, a need, a solution in the world, my dad has always been the type of man to find that solution and to be that problem solver. He's always been a great mediator in between the solution and the problem, now that I, I think about it. Which is actually really interesting as, you, as you're speaking on this. That's, that is how we even came about that house, is your dad's dad was thinking about it and then just so happened to be that the guy was working there. And then it just, it was weird how it snowballed after that because then that guy ended up cutting down other trees for us and then buying a motorcycle that we had in the backyard. And this is a long time ago before we bought that house, but it just, it snowballed into all these different things just off your dad just saying, I wonder what's going to happen with this house. And then it just so happens he meets his other contractor and the rest is history. You remember the craziest shit. <laughs> Never in my life would I have remembered half of what you just said. I, I Anything that's important, I can't remember. But <laughs> when it comes to this useless stuff, I remember like it was yesterday. Yeah, and, and getting back on, on point here, I, I want to talk about this because this has happened a lot in our lives, and yet the opposite has also been true. And maybe it's the same as you listen to this, where 
things have just seemed to always fall into place. And a lot of people would equate that to God, right? Putting their trust in God and then by simply trusting in God, then allowing his plan to be that to which you fall into and then being okay with it, right? I, not being a believer in the God of the Bible, seem to find ways to create my own destiny, but then to also alter my energy in a way that's supportive of that. And I think that with that hard work, due diligence, discipline, all the other things, and not to say that's not the same for, for somebody who has a different way of believing, but my dad's energy in that same regard, I think, is what allows things to always fall into place in that way. And I think it is such an incredible thing to just see it play out time and time again. And my dad is also the type of person to where he wouldn't he wouldn't openly say like, oh, well, it's all going to work out. And I trust the plan in God. But he has that same belief, not only not in the in the sense of, you know, God's going to take care of things for me. But my dad has this sense of like, it's always it's like it's going to be fine. Like it'll mm-hmm. always work out. And that has been so supportive of him with him unknowing of it. You know, and it's and it's so true, especially with everything in his life. Ever since I've known him for the 16 years, it's just it's crazy to see how it's developed. And then on on a bigger scale but then again you see the points in in the same mindset where he struggles with keeping that mindset and not and and it's not all all peaches and cream all the time it's just you see the positives and negatives with it yeah and i think that it's something so good to point out because that happens to all of us mm-hmm. right i know clint in the beginning of our marriage in particular we had such a sour mindset when it came to like, oh, of course, like the shit would hit the fan and it would land on us. Mm-hmm. I've never said that before. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. I, I know the shit hits the fan, but I've never heard of the land <laughs> on us. I like that. <laughs> so do I. But that's how everything seemed to be. And then we started to learn and, and grow and we did it together. And then it seemed like that, I mean, it's not that things that suck don't happen still. Things will always suck that will still happen. And by shifting our mindset and how we view that stress, you know, we recently talked about it. We stopped looking at life is out to get us. And we started looking at it in terms of like, okay, universe, I hear you. You want to challenge me? Let's fucking go out there and brawl right now. Mm -hmm. And then when you have that mindset, then all of the tools just somehow tend to land in your hands. Yeah, exactly. It's it's that I need this this palm tree trimmed and it's going to happen and sure as shit you get that phone call. And and that's how stuff will work out. Not all the time, but it does a majority of the time if you're paying attention to it. I think that's the key with it as well. Yeah, there, there's another thing I think that's important when it comes to getting what you want in life. And it's something I think goes goes un, unspoken about, and it's networking. My dad, if you were to have a physical Rolodex, my dad's would be miles and miles long. There is not a single, do you know somebody who does this, that my dad doesn't have an answer to. And the coolest thing is my dad's been in the business of, you know, he owns a construction company for such a long time that this isn't like, oh, I've heard of a person who does this. My dad has such tight knit relationships in his community that he genuinely knows somebody. So it's usually like, yeah, and then my dad will say it's for him or say it's for his daughter. And then we should have a $1,000 bill that turns into like a $600 bill. Like, Networking, I think, is so crucial when it comes to being able to build up this reservoir of knowing that, yeah, things will work out, but you're also putting in the effort because you can't effortlessly have a network of people. You need to be social and you need to have the desire to build those connections with people. And I think that by doing that, that's been a great attribute to help with my father's success, but then also he's given that to me which has been incredibly fulfilling within my own life. Yeah, and and it's something that it's like I said, it's it's when you when you start recognizing it, you'll notice it more and more. And when when you focus on the when the shit hits the fan and it lands on us mindset, 
that's all you're going to really recognize. You're not going to recognize everything else associated to it. Yeah. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. I hope that you ask and that you receive, but most importantly, that you align your energy to that. Do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.